guess what I have here? Notice no commanders. I am playing Popper. Actually, the truth is, is that I used to play this format all the time before I played any singleton formats. It was pretty much the first format I played a lot of online. Um, I had a really, really incredibly powerful Popper deck during uh, the 6th edition rules era. In fact, this deck was completely designed to abuse the 6th edition rules. Um, but then they made the change to it, which nerfed the deck quite a bit. It's still extremely effective, and it was still, in my opinion, the best deck in the format for a long time. But um, gradually, uh, they introduced a lot of new things. I think that the main thing that really changed my opinion of this deck was um, the introduction of Glimmer Post, which made the 8 Cloud Post ramp thing a total nightmare to deal with. And my deck has no permission and no land destruction at all, so... Um, it was really vulnerable to ramp strategies. Against any type of burn strategy or basically any creature-based strategy, this deck is still the nuts. But um, against uh, against heavy ramp with permission and blue draw spells, you're just outclassed. So I, I shelved it and went on to other formats, but every now and then I like to play it, uh, especially late at night when there aren't too many commander games. And uh, this game is incredible, as you'll see. Unfortunately, I have a uh, very weak draw. The deck has a million synergies in it, which will become obvious as the game goes on, but um, it's sort of designed around momentary blink and a lot of uh, things that would ordinarily involve the stack, like damage going on the stack and blinking and bouncing with Aether spell bombs, doing all sorts of cool stuff, but um, we will see as the game goes. Unfortunately, I have to mulligan. This draw is unusable. All white spells, two blue mana, and a ninja. So I mulligan to this very keepable hand. And actually, the only thing I've changed about the deck in like the last three years, or maybe even longer, is um, I swapped out a few basic lands for guild gates, which I'm not actually completely sold on. They smoothed the mana quite a bit, and that was one of the few issues that the deck had at the expense of making it much slower. Um, it doesn't have a lot of critical turn one plays, but it's really all about turn two. Um, and guild gates have terrible synergy with chancery and things like that. It does use a lot of bounce lands, too. I think I'm running six. Um, and although it doesn't matter too much this game, and this guy starts with Cloud Post going first. So I pretty much know I'm up against one of two decks, either Mono Green Ramp or against Blue Red. I think Mono Green Ramp is probably a little easier to beat, but as I've seen before, um, it's possible for the Ramp decks to just get deck draws I literally cannot do anything against, where they have eight mana on turn three and they start casting Ulamog's Crusher and Crush Me. So he gets Battlement, which answers my question about what type of deck he's playing. So he's got his ramp already in effect. And I am just going to try to... Yeah, the thing is also this deck plays Reap and Sow and Acid Moss. I think four copies of each card. So, I mean, basically I'm, I'm drawing dead against either one of those cards at this point. If he's got either one, he's going to have five, six mana next turn. And uh, I'm going to have zero. So I've got to just pray he doesn't have either one. And fortunately, he's just got more walls. So this gives me some time. And at the end of the turn, I'm just going to bounce his battlement. Um, my hand is very slow to develop, and I've got to, uh, I've got to lean and squire, though, so I can at least get it back. And this should hopefully slow him down and keep him off of Crusher mana for a little while. Um, he cycles in response and casts Crop Rotation. Get another Cloud Post to make my life even worse. So now he's got four, five, six, seven next turn. I just cast my spell bomb. You can just see like we're playing two different two different versions of magic here, really. And he's got a glimmer post. So now he's got six, seven, eight, nine. He can actually play his battlement. And he just does nothing this turn. So I just play Rift Watcher. Figuring, well, I can start beating down, use my ninja. A lot of the tricks of my deck will become apparent as the game goes on. So now his mana is exploding here. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 2, 4. It's kind of like Commander. <laughs> he taps all his mana and casts Aurochs Herd, which I guess is one of the reasons why people play Mono Green. This thing is pretty nasty, because it's basically four, four, four tramplers in one card. And I know he's got at least one more in his hand and some mystery card. Fortunately, he's drawn no LD, which is why I'm actually still in this game at all. So I send in my Rift Watcher. Draw a card. 
it's funny just thinking about it in retrospect like my deck is literally probably a 10 percent dog to this like probably a nine to one dog <laughs> against mono green ramp with eight land kill spells and aurox herds and uh and eldrazi guys um fortunately this is one of those 10 percent games um so i play my square to get back to either spell bomb and play another land and so at this point right i'm facing down these guys are going to attack for 10 i'm at 24 so next turn he's presumably going to cast two more of them so i'm going to have i have no way to stop one right now next turn i'm going to be facing four four fours with trample which will all boost each other up by three so it'll be four seven fours attacking me and i'll be at 14 so it doesn't look very good <laughs> but this deck does amazing things and you'll see as the game goes on that it amazing things to transpire so he attacks me for 10 i just have to take it so I'm going to just try to set up a big block here that at least takes out a couple of guys, and I'm hoping I can gain enough life and start whittling down his, chopping his guys down one at a time, and hopefully he draws nothing else. So he plays another Orox Herd and another Orox Herd. So they're all out. Gang's all here. Attacking for 28 next turn. So I've got a bunch of Trinkets doing nothing. It's the name of this deck, by the way. It's called Trinket Blinket. Uh, signature cards right there in my hand. So I'm going to start with that thing. And my first plan is to just simply pop one of the Oryx Herds with Double Spell Bomb. That at least cuts down a lot of the damage. To, uh, one less attacker to boost all these guys and one less big trampler, which gives me enough to just survive. So blow up one guy, cast this guy. Takes me to 16. So now I've got the option to double block one and take a shitload, but I will survive. And if he's got nothing else... With the rest of the synergy in my hand, I can actually recover. So he smashes me for... Here comes 18 incoming. I double block. I take 12 and go to 2. Fortunately, he just says done. So, not good here, but not looking terrible. And I've got double blink, which is fantastic, actually. Because that pretty much offsets one entire attack, and I've got an option to block this guy. So... The Trinket Mage in my hand is a key part of this comeback, mainly because I have a card, a single copy of it in my deck, called Bone Splitter. And Bone Splitter is in the deck as a way to boost all of my two power guys, because I have nothing in the deck that has more than two power. Um, it's a way to boost my two power guys up to four, and it's totally critical for uh, taking out three and four toughness creatures. Um, that single Bone Splitter has won countless games, and it's... It actually, well, it would be instrumental to this game if I had played it around that, but um, I don't know if it actually matters all that much. So I'm thinking about different plays here, and I'm thinking actually about um, doing the Bone Splitter thing right now. I cast Trinket Mage, cast Bone Splitter, and equip, and um, actually, I don't really quite have enough mana for that, I guess. Well, let's see what I do. Yeah, so I just play a Spell Bomb, and I'm just going to stall him a little bit. I realize that I'm one mana short of doing anything meaningful, so I'm just going and. Uh, I'm hoping to just attack him with the Rift Watcher, have him uh, run his elf into it when I blink, and hopefully he draws nothing again, and I get this extra mana out, which will allow me to do some neat tricks next turn. So I'm going to attack here. He sends him both happily. Allows me to blink. I gain four, six, or four back, and block his elf. Take another four. He recasts his herd and does nothing. So this is very, very nice play right here. I'm drawing that guy, he's going to be a part of the recovery. So now I've got the mana that I need, and I'm thinking about what to do here. And I think about getting um, Bone Splitter right now and equipping, which would allow me to basically block here and block here and blink my guy, um, which would mean that I would gain four back. And I was thinking with, with six additional rules the play would have worked perfectly. This is another example of why this deck was so dominant during 6th E rolls. I would block, he would assign his trample damage to the Rift Watcher, so he'd, he'd deal 3 to it, 2 to me, and um, he'd trample over this guy, dealing 3 to it, and I would blink my Rift Watcher, um, soaking up 3 of the damage. I would gain 4 back, kill this guy, take 2 trample here and 3 for a total of 5, but I'd gain 6, and I would, or I'd gain four back, and I would be at one, and I would kill one of the Aurochs herds, and I'd keep both of my creatures, or I'd keep uh, the Rift Watcher around. I know that was a complicated explanation, but it would have worked. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't now. If I blink my guy after assigning blockers, he just tramples me for five and I die. So I can't do that. So I get another Aether Spellbomb. Just going to see what he does here. Bounce this guy. Now a double block makes perfect sense. And he kills my Rift Watcher to stop the blinking shenanigans. Again, 60 rolls right there. Wait for him to assign damage. Stack it. Blink my Rift Watcher. Kill his Orox Herd. Gain four back. Go all the way up to eight. So amazing how good this deck was back with the old rolls. So he casts a Convoked, or Entwined Reap and Sow. And recast this dumb Orox again. So I've got the cool Blink Mole Drifter trick. Since I'm planning on blocking with it anyway, might as well draw extra cards here. And now we have actually kind of stabilized here. I just double block, lose both my guys. He's got Reap and Sow again, but fortunately we just evoked Mole Drifter. That's actually exactly why I did it. Because I wanted to just be more mana efficient and draw more cards to get more land. Because I know he's due for some LD. Cast another Mole Drifter and draw another Mole Drifter. And now I'm actually ahead in cards, incredibly. And he says, go. So now I've got the six card hand, plenty of mana. He's only a 30. The comeback it's really underway. I draw another ninja. I draw ninja and uh, another land. So now it's like a dominant board position. I mean, obviously he's got infinity mana, but he's only drawing one card a turn. So the worst, the best thing he could probably do at this point is just top deck into some of his Eldrazi guys, and I'd have to start playing bounce games with them while trying to win with damage. Meanwhile, he just draws more LD, which is great. Never thought I'd be so happy to see multiple entwined reap and sows in a row. So I think about playing the Bone Splitter and attacking for uh, for six, but um, I realize it's probably better to just wait and develop my mana some more first. This play is obviously awesome because I get to draw a card and deal the same damage and get that Maul Drifter back. And I go get another Aether Spellbomb, just anticipating that he is going to top deck into Eldrazi. And I honestly don't even know if this deck plays any creatures besides its eight things, the four Aurochs and the four Eldrazi guys, but... Um, be prepared. Really, to make this complete, all I need to do is draw uh, another Lean and Squire. Because if I draw a Lean and Squire, then um, these blinks in the graveyard will give me a lot of spell bombs. Because I've used most of the ones I have in my deck already. Yeah, I run three. So two are already used, and the third one's in play. So I need a Squire now to keep recurring them. And he just draws another wall. So now it's time to bring the pain. Attack for two. Decided I'd rather just play another land. There's the squire I needed. Oh wait, maybe I had that in my hand next turn. I wasn't really looking. <laughs> so there's his first crusher. His crusher shows up 28 cards down, which is another fortunate thing for me. But I'm really on the attack here. I've got six a turn. I've got Spellbomb. I've got squire. So we're looking really strong. Time to equip. Bounce this guy. Send in the team. He blocks like that. I'm thinking about casting Spellbomb and blowing up one of these walls, but doubtless he's probably got more walls to draw and may even have more walls in his deck that he's just holding on to just to keep cards in his hand. So I figure I'm probably not going to get through on the ground this game. It's probably not even worth wasting a, a pirate on it. And besides, the pirate might be better served using it on him eventually. Get back Aether Spellbomb, cast it. Sure enough, there's another wall right on schedule, so he did have one in hand. Time to bounce the Crusher again. Bash for six. At this point, my hand is just a dud, like I've got all land, so I really want to draw into um, either another Mole Drifter or uh, into um, into another Avon Rift Watcher to deal some more damage. So I decided to just blink my guy right now. Sure enough, deck delivers Avon Rift Watcher. Play that guy. Cast Pyrite. He casts his Crusher again. There's Acid Moss to kill like the eighth crew of this game. How many has he killed? One, two, three, four. God. 
Oh, it's so improbable that I'm, I've actually won this game, just given the cards that have been cast. But the order is the most important thing. So he's down to 18, taking 8 a turn now. End of turn, I'm just going to Pirate Spell Bomb him. Pop. Draw another Blink. Send him to the team. I'm going to Blink the Squire. Get back my Aether Spell Bomb. And sensing imminent defeat, knowing his own deck. Toss you scoops on turn 16. Pretty awesome comeback. It's fun to play this deck from time to time just as a break from Commander. And this was definitely a great demonstration of what it is capable of doing. Hope you enjoyed it.